We've got four teams on a bye, six running backs with a questionable tag, and a bunch of others that don't have the best matchups in the world. So who are you going to be tossing into your lineup this week? I've got my top 30 running backs right now for you. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation, to kick off this video? You know what I want to do? I want to celebrate a player potentially coming back this week that we have been sorely missing for several weeks. So why don't we give away an autographed Justin Jefferson jersey from our friends over at Pristine Auction. If you want to be eligible to win this jersey, do me a favor. Head on over to Pristine Auction. Create a free account using code word headliners. When you do that, you are going to get a coupon for $10 off of your first purchase at Pristine Auction. And you're going to be entered into this drawing to win this Justin Jefferson jersey. The only other thing that you need to do is leave a comment down below and we'll pick a random person with a pristine account to get this jersey in one of next week's videos. All right, but enough of that because we've got so much more that we gotta talk about. I gotta fly through these rankings because it's Thursday and you need to know who to start. Let's kick it off. And for the first time this season, is Christian McCaffrey not at number one? That is right, at number one this week, it's gonna be Austin Eckler going up against Green Bay. He hasn't been great on the ground so far. He's had some issues with consistency running the football, but going up against Green Bay, who got absolutely sliced and diced last week, by the Pittsburgh Steelers running backs. I absolutely could see Austin Eckler making some noise on the ground this week. And number two, I'm gonna go with Christian McCaffrey, and this is gonna be a really tough matchup. Tampa Bay, I don't believe, gets the love on the ground that they deserve stopping the run, but it's Christian McCaffrey. Brees Hall going up against Buffalo, and he's still having some explosive issues, right? Coming back from that knee injury last year, it's going to take a while to build everything up. For Brees Hall, though, the key is the volume that he's getting. And really, when it comes to running back and ranking running backs right now, you got to rank the guys that are getting the most volume, then take a look at who has the best opportunity, and then kind of go from there. And when you take his volume plus opportunity, you get a decent upside every single week, even if the floor isn't where we would like just yet. Tennessee's defense isn't looking as great on the ground stopping the run as it did at one point this season, but we know that they still have the ability to do it. And with the way Jacksonville's offense has looked as of recent, I do have some worries about whether or not Jacksonville will be in the type of positive game script that will allow them to just run Travis Etienne. Also, should we ask the question, is Doug Peterson trying to limit his touches? This week will tell us a lot. Josh Jacobs going up against Miami could see 20 plus touches this week. And Miami's run defense currently ranked 13th in the NFL right now is not bad, but can be ran against. But the question is, is how quickly does Miami put the game out of control? And if that happens, does Jacobs get the volume that we would like? In the same matchup, Raheem Mostert at number six. Now, the Raiders defense absolutely has an issue stopping the run ranked 29th in the NFL right now where he most he is a little banged up and Devonta Chan will be coming back this week potentially but if the Miami offense gets out in front early and they put the Raiders down early does that mean they're going to absolutely run the heck out of the football there's potential for it. And if that happens, even if Raheem Mostert only gets 15 touches every time he has the ball, it has the potential for a huge play. Jabir Gibbs at number seven. Now Chicago is really good at stopping the run, actually. Ranked number two in the NFL right now. So on the ground may be a little bit more tough, but Jameer Gibbs has been making it known through the air. He's one of the best running backs in all the NFL over the last couple of weeks. I see Detroit continuing to do that, getting him involved in the air and puts him inside the top. Top 10 conversation this week. Tony Pollard going up against Carolina has a great opportunity this week, but he had a good opportunity last week and didn't do anything with it. This is Tony Pollard's last chance. If he can't get anything done against Carolina, then the dude is definitely going outside the top 12 for the time being. But when you go up against a defense like this and you're still the primary running back, it only takes a play or two, which is one of the reasons why I've got to keep him in the top 10 this week. Devonta Chan at number nine. As of this recording, no guarantee that he's going to play as of yet. I am moving forward as if he will. But with Devonta Chan, I do expect 
Miami to potentially limit him just a little bit this week. They should win this game against Las Vegas. No reason to ramp him up way too quickly. You're going to want him for the stretch run, and that's the reason why I've got him a little bit further down here because the big play is still there. Saquon Barkley at number 10. Now, the issue with Saquon Barkley that a lot of people bring up is that he's just not producing, but like I mentioned at the top of the rankings here, when you take a look at the running backs right now, guys that are getting the ball 15, 20, 20 plus times a game, they they absolutely have to be up in this area because they're getting a much better opportunity than most other running backs who right now are in committees. You got to still roll with Saquon Barkley. He's getting more touches in the majority and going up against Washington, who just gutted their defensive line a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully Barkley can get a little bit more consistency this week and hopefully the Giants can hang around a little longer. DeAndre Swift has saw his consistency drop over the last couple of weeks and we haven't really seen his work in the passing game the way we did right in the middle point of the season. So hopefully they can get back to utilizing him a little bit more like that. Kansas City's run defense a little bit down as of recent, but still playing very well. If this turns into a shootout, DeAndre Swift may not get the touches on the ground that we want. Listen, I'm all for the David Montgomery revenge game. Absolutely get it and would love to see it. But here's the problem. Chicago is still ranked number two against the run so far this season. They're playing well when it comes to stopping the run. And if David Montgomery does doesn't find the end zone, that is where a lot of issues are going to be caused. I've got him inside the top 12, not based on his volume, not based on his rushing yards, but the fact that I still think Detroit puts the ball in the red zone multiple times this week, and at the goal line, David Montgomery probably gets those touches. So maybe he only runs for 45 or 50 yards, but I bet he scores two touchdowns this week. Kenneth Walker at number 13 right now is losing some snaps to Zach Charbonnet, but Charbonnet isn't doing anything with those snaps. Yes, he's getting them to spell Walker, and Walker probably hasn't been fully healthy over the last few weeks. Hopefully this week against the Rams, he is back on track, he is fully healthy, and maybe he can rip off a couple of big runs on the ground while still getting a majority of the carries. The Los Angeles Chargers got torn apart by Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, and this season they've been pretty good at stopping the run, but they suck at it's stopping the pass to running backs, which is where Aaron Jones definitely helps out. Now, A.J. Dillon had a decent week last week. Most of that was built off of one carry, though. Aaron Jones is still the guy. And going up against the Chargers, I do expect Green Bay to say, we're not going to be able to get into a shootout like Detroit did with them last week. We're going to need to control the game a little bit more. That's where Aaron Jones comes in. Now, if Jacksonville's offense comes back from their horrid performance last week and plays well, Derrick Henry isn't going to have a whole lot of ceiling. It's because Tennessee is going to find themselves in a negative game script. But if Jacksonville still has issues on offense and Tennessee can keep it close, Derrick Henry should see 20-plus carries this week. I'm all on board Derrick Henry having a safe floor the rest of the season, but we do know he just doesn't have a very high upside right now. For those of you that say, I hate Rashad White, I don't. I've got him at number 16 this week, and you know what? That's four spots higher than the consensus and one of the highest rankings overall in the industry for this week. I don't hate him. I'm just trying to keep you all informed on how tough it has been on the ground for him this year and that that can really lead to some issues in terms of consistency if he doesn't score a touchdown or get the work in the passing game. But going up against San Francisco in their pass rush, I would not be surprised if he doesn't see 7 to 10 targets this week and have a really, really good offensive output in the receiving game If even, even if he doesn't do much on the ground. Javante Williams continues to build up his work in Minnesota Minnesota on the ground can be a little bit tougher, but even through the air last week had a receiving touchdown. Love to see that Javante Williams continues to climb up the rankings, and if Denver's offense can continue to play at least balanced the way that they are, he could have really good value down the stretch. Listen, the last time Brian Robinson played the New York Giants, I had him inside the top five, and I can't do that this week because the last time Washington played the Giants, they came out and threw the football like crazy and they didn't do so hot, and the game ended up being a lot closer to begin with than what you would have liked. I don't know how much positive game script there is going to be for Washington. I don't know what their game plan is going to be. They should be running the football, but they continue to throw it like they're the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's worked out all right for Sam Howell. He's playing very well from a fantasy aspect and a real-life aspect, but they really need to get more balanced, and until they do, Brian Robinson doesn't have the upside that I would like. At this week, number 19, Jerome Ford, the same thing as Rashad White. I 
I've gotten four spots higher than the consensus and one of the highest rankings in the industry right now for Jerome Ford. So the guys that you say that I hate, I don't. I just take it on a week by week basis. This week for Jerome Ford, I do see some potential big plays and I do think he gets the most volume, but Kareem Hunt is still going to continue to steal some touches and he's still going to continue to get the goal line work that really doesn't allow Jerome Ford to score in the red zone and give him the upside that we would like. Good bet this week, not a great bet. Devin Singletary's got a pretty decent matchup going up against Arizona, but Houston loves to throw the football, and Arizona with Kyler Murray back is a little bit more dynamic now. Devin Singletary isn't going to run for 150 yards again, but I do think he is a safe bet to come close to 100, especially if Houston can lead the game and lead it early. James Conner got all the work on the ground last week for Arizona, or almost all of it, but he didn't get any work in the passing game. And if he gets game scripted out against Houston early, I don't know if they're going to throw him out there if he still isn't close to being a hundred percent keep an eye on that if he gets passing game work definitely could scoot up towards the top 15 area but if he doesn't he could possibly even drop a little bit further than this joe mixon on thursday night football the name of the game for mixon right now is do just enough and score a touchdown baltimore last week after getting beat up on the ground by cleveland i highly doubt they're going to let joe mixon do that to them plus cincinnati and baltimore really could be a back and forth throwing affair and if it is it absolutely is but Joe Mixon, right around 50 yards and a touchdown, wouldn't really send him much higher than this. James Cook at number 22, really interested to see what they do with him this week. He fumbled twice last week. Yes, twice. Check the box score. You'll see two fumbles, one lost. But now they've gone and they fired their offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey. So really, what are we going to see from Cook moving forward? Is this going to be the same kind of game plan that Dorsey had just translated to a new OC? Are they going to try and switch some things up a little bit? The, the Jets on the ground, they can give up some big plays. They do give up quite a few rushing yards. Are they going to lean on James Cook? Are they going to put Leonard Fournette on the roster? Is it going to be Latavius Murray again? I don't know. Good week last week, not great, and I don't know what to get from him this week. Isaiah Pacheco at number 24 has a really low ceiling this week. If Philadelphia is either playing in a positive game script or this is a neutral game script, but a lot of throwing back and forth, Isaiah Pacheco may not even see 10 carries this week. And the two losses that Kansas City has had this season, Pacheco has not touched the ball 10 times. That's my biggest worry. Cleveland gave up a big play to Keaton Mitchell last week, but outside of that, still did a really good job of limiting the running game from Baltimore. So Jalen Warren this week has the highest upside for Pittsburgh for me because he's still going to get work in the passing game. And the dude has still been electric on the ground as well. Not the highest upside week for me, but if he can get six, seven targets, we're good to go. Gus Edwards against Cincinnati isn't going to have a highlight of a night, but definitely could end up finding the end zone once or twice. If that happens, decent floor. Sucky ceiling, though, because I still don't think Baltimore is going to be able to run the ball like crazy. Ty Chandler is probably going to get all of the volume in the world going up against Denver, and because we haven't seen a whole lot for him and Denver has been playing better as of recent, I don't want to go too high with him, but I definitely think he's a great fill-in for somebody looking for just points this week. Najee Harris against Cleveland at number 28 doesn't have the upside that he had last week, and Jalen Warren's contributions in the passing games, plus his ability to be more efficient, has him above him. Tajay Spears, not Harris, inside joke if you caught the live stream this past Sunday. But for Tajay Spears, I talked about it in the start and sit video earlier this week. I don't love his ceiling this week, but he could have a decent floor because of how poorly Jacksonville has done going up against running backs who can catch the football. Kareem Hunt at number 30. Won't have the volume as Jerome Ford. Won't have the same upside as Jerome Ford because of the lack of big playability, but he's getting the touchdowns and that keeps him inside the top 30 right now. Now, just outside the top 30, looking in, and the very first one is going to be Keaton Mitchell. And I know a lot of you are going to fight to have Keaton Mitchell ranked this week, but I just can't do it as of yet. He's not getting a lot of volume. He has been dealing with kind of a little bit of a sore hamstring, really only had two plays last week that made his day, the one big run and one big reception. But after the one big run, he lost yards on his next two touches. He is going to be lightning. He is going to show some big plays. He is going to score some touchdowns. But I don't think he is a guy that we can consistently rank inside the top 30 when we still don't know what his type of volume will be moving 
going forward, if Justice Hill is still getting touches, and if Gus Edwards is still the goal line back. If you have to start him, start him. I'm not telling you to sit him. I'm telling you if you do start him, though, just be prepared to be disappointed if he can't get the big play out of the way early. Daryl Henderson going up against Seattle, really tough matchup. Should still be the lead back, but not nearly a high enough ceiling or, or floor for me to put him inside the top 30. Dante Foreman and Khalil Herbert going up against a tough Detroit defense against the run, not just in terms of stopping yards, but also stopping fantasy points from them. Probably going to see a good mix of Khalil Herbert this week, and that's why I can't get Dante Foreman with a tough matchup inside the top 30. Antonio Gibson, if you play in a PPR league, Antonio Gibson should be considered as a potential flex option right now. I don't really think that he is a guy that we can consistently rely on, but over the last two weeks, he has been looked at in the passing game a lot more. And finally, Rico Daldo. I'm going to bring up his name because last week when Dallas put the game out of control, Daldo came out of nowhere and had a really good last quarter of football. Carolina has a tough time stopping the run this year. If for some reason Dallas gets out in front once again and Tony Pollard isn't crushing it, Dowdo could be a guy that if you're if you're desperate, if you have an emergency, if you need somebody to flex, maybe we should take a look at him. All right, headliners, there you go. My top 30 running back rankings and a few guys that are just on the outside looking in. I appreciate all of you that have tuned into the content today. Do me a favor though, on the way out, you gotta hit that like button for me. Turn on the bell notification so anytime we go live, you'll know about it and you'll be able to check out our live content or our drop content, whatever it may be. But for now, I'm gonna get out of here. Hopefully everybody out there is staying safe, staying healthy. Don't forget to comment either so you can be entered to win the Justin Jefferson jersey. And I'll catch y'all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. I'm a headliner.